A guy named Sato, a programmer extraordinaire, or so he likes to think, lived his life in a symphony of clicks and code. His biggest adventure until now? Probably that time he tried a new coffee flavor. But as fate would have it, his rather uneventful life was about to hit a plot twist bigger than when he discovered his coffee wasn't decaf. One night, while battling the final boss, a.k.a. A particularly stubborn piece of code, something extraordinary happened. A swirling vortex of light appeared, probably mistaking his office for a disco. And whoosh! Sato found himself not in Kansas anymore, but in a land where dragons roamed and nobody had heard of a keyboard. Talk about an upgrade from his dual monitor setup. In this new world, Sato discovered he had powers that would make a superhero jealous. With a simple command, he wiped out a dragon army. Oops. Talk about overkill. He went from zero to hero, literally overnight. It was like someone entered a cheat code on his behalf. Now, if only he could figure out how to use these powers to get a decent latte around here. Initially, Sato was as out of place as a penguin in a sauna. But with a logical mind honed by years of debugging, he started to navigate this world with the ease of someone who just googled how to survive in a fantasy world. He met beings of all shapes and sizes, and surprisingly, not all of them wanted to roast him for dinner. He was evolving from a mere code jockey to a full-fledged fantasy hero. In this strange land, Sato's social life got a major upgrade. He went from chatting in online forums to in-person discussions about magic, dragons, and how to save the world. Who knew? The guy who once struggled to order pizza over the phone was now negotiating with princesses and battling evil lords. Talk about a glow-up! In this hilariously unexpected journey, Sato, our beloved code warrior, finds himself in the midst of an epic tale, complete with strange companions, mystical powers, and a world that's as confusing as his old programming manuals. From zero to unlikely hero, Sato's adventure is one filled with laughs, surprises, and the occasional dragon-induced fire hazard. Enter Xena, a warrior who could give any action hero a run for their money. She's tough, she's brave, and she probably has more battle skills in her pinky than Sato in his entire coding career. Their meeting? Picture this. Sato, lost like a tourist without a map, and Xena swooping in like a knight in shining armor. Well, more like a knight in a really cool battle outfit. Next up, we have Pochi, the demi-human kiddo with enough enthusiasm to power a small city. She's got the innocent charm of a puppy and the loyalty to match. Sato saving Pochi? More like adopting the world's most adorable sidekick. Who knew our hero had a soft spot for demi-human kids with tails? Tama, another delightful demi-human, is like the energizer bunny in a fantasy world. She's quick, she's agile, and she probably thinks danger is just another game. Her first encounter with Sato? Picture a whirlwind of energy meeting mister. Liza's the kind of warrior you want on your side when things go south. She's as strong as an ox and as loyal as they come. When she's not saving Sato's bacon, she's probably wondering why she's following around a guy who thinks a dragon is just a really big lizard. Ariza, the girl shrouded in mystery, is like a walking, talking riddle. She's got smarts. She's got sass. And she knows more about this world than Sato knows about his computer. Their meeting was less love at first sights and more... What's your deal? And let's not forget the supporting cast of female characters, each more colorful than a bag of jelly beans. From high-flying mages to noble-hearted princesses, they turn Sato's journey into a kaleidoscope of personalities, adventures, and the occasional Why am I here again? In this chapter, our hero Sato finds himself surrounded by a band of women who are as brave as they are quirky. Each brings a dash of charm, 
a sprinkle of chaos, and a whole lot of personality to the table. Together, they turn what could have been a lonely journey into something resembling a cross between a circus and a heroic saga with just a touch more magic and a lot more laughs. Imagine a world where a computer geek meets a warrior princess. Sounds like the start of a bad joke, right? But that's exactly what happens to Sato. He's wandering around like a lost puppy and BAM! In comes Xena, swinging a sword like she owns the place. Sato's thinking, I should have taken that online sword, fighting course while Xena's all about saving the day. At first, their interactions are as smooth as a programming error on a Monday morning. Xena's all action and strategy, while Sato's still trying to figure out if dragons have a reset button. But as they spend more time together, something clicks. And no, not just Sato's mouse. Xena starts appreciating Sato's oddball wisdom, and Sato finds out that there's more to life than a computer screen. Like, you know, not getting eaten by a dragon. You'd think a warrior and a programmer would mix as well as oil and water. But in this oddball tale, they blend like coffee and cream. Xena's brawn and Sato's brains become the talk of the town, or at least the talk of the local tavern. They're battling monsters, uncovering conspiracies, and occasionally running for their lives, all in a day's work. There are moments in this duo's journey that would make for epic social media posts. Like the time Sato accidentally used a mega spell and Xena had to save his behind from a horde of angry dragons. Or when Xena got trapped in a mystical maze and Sato had to use his gaming skills to navigate a real-life dungeon. Who knew those late-night gaming sessions would come in handy? In this chapter... The story of Sato and Xena unfolds like a comedy of errors turned epic saga. It's an adventure where brains meet brawn and a computer nerd finds a kindred spirit in a fearless warrior. Together, they're not just surviving, they're rewriting the rules of heroism, one awkward step at a time. In the most unlikely turn of events, Sato, the programmer turned unintentional hero stumbles upon Poshi, a demi-human child caught in a pickle. Not literally, though that would be quite a sight. Sato, who's more accustomed to saving files than people, suddenly finds himself in a daring rescue mission. Picture this. Our tech-savvy hero trying to look menacing while actually wondering if there's an app for rescuing demi-humans the budding relationship between Sato and Pochi is like watching a live action how to guide on parenting if the guide was written by someone who thought children could be muted like a phone. Pochi's boundless energy and Sato's awkward attempts at caregiving create a sitcom worthy dynamic. Sato teaches her the essentials like not eating things that are on fire, while Pochi shows him the joy in life's simple things, like finding a new bug which, to Sato's relief, isn't a computer bug. Their journey together is filled with moments that would have anyone rolling with laughter. Remember that time Pochi tried to help Sato with a spell and almost turned him into a frog? Or when Sato attempted to cook a meal and Pachi bravely declared it edible despite it looking like a science experiment gone wrong? Through trials, errors, and lots of giggles, their bond grows stronger than Sato's Wi-Fi connection. In this chapter, the story of Sato and Pochi unfolds like a heartwarming comedy show where each episode brings a new adventure, a new laugh, and a new lesson. From their awkward first meeting to becoming an inseparable pair, this duo shows that even in a world full of magic and monsters, the most unlikely friendships can be the greatest adventures of all. Enter Tama, the demi-human embodiment of a bouncy ball with a tail. When Sato first meets her, it's like watching a live cartoon character spring into action. Picture this. Sato a guy who thought exercise meant stretching for the remote meets Tama, a pint-sized whirlwind of energy who could probably out-jump a kangaroo. If Sato thought handling computer bugs was tough, 
Wait till he tries keeping up with Tama's antics. Their dynamic is like a buddy comedy where one buddy is a calm, collected tech whiz, and the other is, well, Tama. Every day with her is a new adventure. Whether it's learning the art of not falling off flying creatures or the skill of dodging Tama's spontaneous acrobatics, the journey of Sato and Tama is sprinkled with moments that would make anyone chuckle. Like the time Tama decided to redecorate their campsite and turned it into a playground. Or when Sato tried teaching her strategy and Tama turned it into a game of hide and seek. Spoiler, Sato is terrible at hide and seek. These moments aren't just fun. They're the building blocks of a friendship that's as quirky as it is heartwarming. In this chapter, the tale of Sato and Tama unfolds with the warmth and humor of a classic comedy duo. Their story is a reminder that sometimes the best way to navigate a strange new world is with a leap of faith, a bounce of enthusiasm, and a friend who keeps you on your toes. Sometimes, quite literally, Liza enters the scene like she's walked straight out of a warrior princess casting call. Imagine Sato's surprise when he, a guy more familiar with keyboard battles, meets Liza, the demi-human with a spear and an attitude to match. Her introduction is less of a handshake and more of a don't-mess-with-me showcase, leaving Sato wondering if there's a manual for dealing with warrior women. Sato and Liza's relationship is like pairing a chess club president with the star of the track team. Liza's all about action and might, while Sato's still trying to figure out if his insurance covers dragon attacks. Their interactions are a mix of Sato's strategic planning and Liza's hit first, ask questions later approach, creating a comedy of tactics that somehow works wonders. The journey of Sato and Liza is filled with moments that would make for great sitcom episodes. Remember the time Sato tried to demonstrate a magic spell and accidentally set Liza's spear on fire? Or when Liza decided to take on a beast solo, leaving Sato to frantically flip through his spellbook like it was a takeout menu? These episodes of chaos and courage aren't just entertaining. They're the building blocks of a bond based on trust, respect, and a healthy dose of humor. In this chapter... The tale of Sato and Liza unfolds like an action-packed comedy. It's a story that shows even the most unlikely of duos can become a force to reckon with, especially when one of them knows how to wield a spear and the other, well, knows how to Google. Together, they navigate the challenges of this fantastical world, proving that sometimes all you need to save the day is a good strategy, a sharp spear, and a sense of humor. Ariza's introduction, a mystery wrapped in an enigma, and a dash of flair when Sato, our keyboard warrior, first crosses paths with Ariza, it's less of a casual meeting and more of a, did I just step into a spy movie? A moment! Ariza, with her air of mystery and a flair for the dramatic, makes quite the entrance leaving Sato wondering if he's accidentally unlocked a secret level in this already bizarre world. The Curious Chemistry Programmer meets mysterious maven pairing Sato with Arisa is like mixing a science experiment with unknown variables. Exciting, unpredictable, and slightly explosive. Ariza's cryptic charm and otherworldly knowledge contrast hilariously with Sato's logical tech savvy approach. Their interactions are a roller coaster of witty banter, eyebrow, raising revelations, and the occasional are we really doing this? Moments, standout scenes. The chronicles of chaos and charm Sato and Ariza's journey is sprinkled with memorable episodes that could rival any comedy show. Picture the scene where Ariza tries to teach Sato the finer points of magic and he ends up accidentally conjuring a flock of pigeons instead of a fireball. Or the time when Ariza's cryptic clues about a looming danger leave Sato deciphering her words like a complicated code, only to realize she's just really fond of riddles. In this chapter, the story of Sato and Ariza unfolds like a madcap adventure filled with intrigue and humor. Their dynamic, 
an odd blend of mystery and method adds an extra layer of hilarity to the already whimsical world they navigate. Together, they face the unknown, one puzzling encounter and laugh, out loud moment at a time, proving that sometimes the best way to solve a mystery is not to take it too seriously. As our tale comes to a close, let's look back at Sato's journey, a tale that makes strange an understatement. From a regular Joe who thought Java was just a coffee type, to a hero in a world where dragons are more common than Wi-Fi signals. Sato has gone from debugging programs to debugging problems in a fantasy world, and boy, what a ride it's been! The many threads of our story, from demi-human dilemmas to magical mishaps, all come together like a well-executed group chat. Each storyline, with its own brand of chaos and charm, finds a conclusion that's as satisfying as finding a bug-free code on the first try. A rare occurrence, but hey, miracles happen. As for the future, well, it's as open as a 24-hour diner. Sado and his motley crew of friends are now seasoned adventurers. Well, as seasoned as a programmer can be, Will they continue to explore this fantastical world? Probably. Will they encounter more bizarre creatures and cryptic challenges? Definitely. Will Sato ever get used to life without a keyboard? Highly doubtful. In the end, Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody is more than just an adventure. It's a story about finding your place in the most unlikely of settings. It's about a programmer who traded his keyboard for a magic wand sort of, and learned that life's biggest bugs aren't found in code, but in a world where the impossible is just another Tuesday. It's a reminder that sometimes stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to the greatest of adventures, especially if that step lands you in a different world altogether. So here's to Sato, the unlikely hero who showed us that even in a land of dragons and magic, the biggest adventure is finding where you belong and maybe learning a spell or two along the way.